Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at the Brava oven. It's a countertop oven that uses light to cook food. It also comes with a price tag that's light years ahead of the competition. The one I bought was 1300 bucks and it has sets all the way up to 1700. So is it just an overpriced easy bake oven or is it something revolutionary? Let's find out in today's video. As stated before, the Brava is a countertop oven that does use light to cook food. The oven is divided into three different zones so you can cook three different things at the same time. They say the Brava hits food with searing heat that browns but does not burn. They have three different price ranges. All of them have the same oven, but the higher price ranges have more accessories than the lower price ranges. I bought the lowest one thinking that might be the one most people are buying. With that one, you get the metal tray and the glass tray and a temperature sensor, and that's it. Now, I usually try to be pretty comprehensive when I do reviews, but I found out pretty early that it's gonna be difficult to do a comprehensive video on this product without being an hour-long infomercial. And by the way, this is not a paid review. I pay for this with my own money, so I'm gonna have pros and cons at the end of this video. But let me show you a bit how it works and the accessories that I got with my unit. Here's the Brava itself. It looks like a conventional countertop oven, but it's not. It comes with this temperature sensor which the first time I saw it, I thought it was discolored. I tried scrubbing it off and then I realized that they actually use these markings on here to help determine the thickness of the meat that you're uh, measuring. So this is actually quite useful. The basic package comes with a metal tray and you'll see in here these numbers are the zones one, two, and three, which are used quite often. This is the glass tray also with zones one, two, and three on it. Later I decided I wanted to add the egg tray. So I bought this separately. It was 50 bucks with 15 shipping. So I paid 65 bucks for this. Now you might think I can just use any kind of egg tray, but you really need it to be the right size so it can slide in the shelves like that. So you kind of have to use theirs. They do say you can use other accessories, but it's not gonna be as efficient if they don't have it perfectly sized to go in here. Now the Brava has a menu here, which actually will go through a screensaver of sorts with recipes on it, but you can find recipes on here. That the options are cook, which you can just they have pre-built recipes in here, which is quite a bit. They have your recent ones, your favorites. You can search for pretty much anything you want. They even have some suggested searches. Sear mode, which they say be careful because it gets hot. Toast mode, lots of different options there. Bake mode, this is if you want to use it just like as a regular countertop oven, this is the mode you probably use first. They have a reheat mode. Over another screen, they have air fry, dehydrate, settings, slow cook. Now the slow cook is going to use the chef's pan which is 300 bucks if you buy it separately and i don't have one of those so i'm not doing that feature rice cook keep warm pro cook custom cook and then a couple other settings here all right so now it's time to start cooking we're going to start small and work our way up from there all right let's start off as basic as we possibly can with some toast and see how that goes all right so to do this we have to just hit the search button type toast uh, scroll down till we see, let's see, we got some wheat bread. All right, so we have, we have two slices here of wheat bread. Uh, it looks like zone two. Browning level from one to 10, I'm gonna go, we'll go level three. Put it in the bottom shelf. And that's all we have to do. Looks like right here, it's gonna take three to five minutes. Here's our recap, and then we have to hit the green button to get started. All right, we've got two slices of bread in the middle of the tray, that would be zone two. It says put it in the bottom shelf. And we're off. This is probably my favorite feature so far. It actually has a camera inside that shows you your food being cooked. Now, how cool is that? I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but it does seem like it's kind of toggling on and off between being bright and being not so bright in there. I don't know if I'm supposed to flip it or not. It doesn't say anything about flipping. Now you can pause the cooking with that pause button right there. Right there, there's a little heart. You can actually hit favorite, so it shows up in your favorite list. Oh, I can definitely see it getting brown now. Look at that, it's, getting, it's definitely getting brown. It's done. Okay, we gotta get out of there. Here we go, final result. This side was facing up, and this side was facing down. They're not cooked the same, but they are certainly toasted. Let's move on to the next item. All right, next up, let's move up just one more level. We'll do some frozen waffles. There's a setting for that on there. Should be easy. Let's try it out. Let's see how these turn out. They're frozen. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna search for waffles here. Waffles, search, frozen waffles. I need to put them in the center of the pan. I got two waffles selected here. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with the default settings. Bottom shelf. You can actually look at the actual recipe right here and that'll show you all the steps and all the details. But for now, I'm just gonna shove them in there and hit start.
And more often you can spy on your waffles as they're being cooked with the hidden spy waffle cam. All right, the waffles are browning. Seems like they kind of went from pretty white to pretty brown quite quickly, actually. I'll admit it's kind of actually fun to watch the screen and see them cook inside like that. Now, if I decide that that's, that's about how much I want, I can just pause it right here. Stop cooking. Looks pretty good. This surface is very non-stick. It's almost like playing air hockey with these things. Like waffle air hockey. But they did turn out quite nice. Let's see the other side. Other side not as brown. Top brown, bottom not as brown. I'm seeing a pattern here between this and the toast. There might be a way to remedy that. I'm not sure. I guess you can just flip them. But I'm still learning the process, so we'll, uh, we'll keep going. All right, let's move up to an actual dish here. The first thing I want to make is a simple breakfast sandwich, but that requires cooked bacon first. Let me cook some bacon and then move on to the breakfast sandwich. Before I can make my breakfast sandwich, I've got to make some bacon. So let's do that. I'm going to search for bacon, bacon, bacon. I'm doing strips of bacon. I'm going to do four slices. So I have to use the first and second zone of the tray. Uh, I definitely want my crispy. I have chewy and crispy. I'm going crispy. Uh, you can personalize it, which I don't need to do. Slide the metal tray into the bottom shelf. Slide in the bacon into the brava. Here we go. It's the bacon spy cam. Got about five to six minutes to wait, so it should be interesting to see how this turns out. All right, it's saying it's done. Let's pull it out of here, see what happens. Oh, we got bacon in there. It's very greasy and crispy looking. And there it is. I think a lot of people would say that looks pretty good. How much splatter is in there? A little bit, not too bad. A little bit on the door, not, it wasn't, didn't sound too splattery. I don't see too much back there. And the final product, what do you guys think? Six minutes, four slices. Uh, I think that came out pretty good. Now we gotta move on to the breakfast sandwich. I've got my English muffins cut in half. I got butter on the cut side of the tops. Now we're supposed to put these on the tray and build our sandwiches. So we're gonna go butter side down, butter side down, and then bottoms facing up. Two slices of bacon on the bottoms. Top the bacon with a slice of cheese. All right, so this tray is done. Now for my $65 egg tray. There it goes. five and a half minutes to my delectable breakfast sandwich. All right, we are done. Done. Let's see, we got, oh, we got gooey cheese. I hear some sizzle. Let's pull these out of here. All right, this looks really nice. Let's see how the eggs look. Oh, eggs look good, eggs look good. They say to use a spoon to make sure these come out. All oh, these come out easily. I don't even need a spoon for that. Okay, we got one bottom. All right, here's the egg. All right, there's my sandwich, and then here is the top to it. Very nice, very nice. Let me do the other one now. All right, this egg came out no problem. And on top. It looks delish. I gotta give it a shot and see how it tastes. It's a very nice looking breakfast sandwich. Mmm. Mmm. So far, I think the Brahma is off to a great start. Breakfast turned out really nice. Well, I was expecting more of a learning curve. This came out right the first time. That's always a good thing, right? I'm gonna eat my sandwich and then move on to the next item. So now it's time for something I think a lot of people be interested in, and that's cooking steaks. Can you actually cook a steak with light? I tried one on medium rare, one on medium, and here's how that went. Let's try searching for top. Top sirloin. All right, there it is, sirloin steak. Two choices, we'll go with top sirloin. Add the sirloin steak to the metal tray. I would say it's about one inch thick. I want it medium rare. Insert the temp sensor horizontally into the meat. Connect it to the Brava. Side of the metal tray onto the top shelf. So this goes on the top shelf and the temperature sensor goes in here. 
I guess that was right. This all seems right. Let's do it. You can spy in your steak with the camera there. I, always, I still think that's cool. It looks like it's going to take 9 to 18 minutes. I'm guessing that's showing the current temperature versus the desired temperature. Elapsed time. All right, so I'm just going to let this do its thing and I'll uh, update you when something new happens. It says almost done. Get ready to plate and serve. I like that. Here we go. And oh, I think it looks nice. I think it's done. All right, here we go. Let's cut it open. There we go. It, lo it looks really nice on the outside. I got to look forward to cutting this open and see how it looks on the inside. There's the bottom. There's the top. I'd say outside looks great. All right, so this is what they're showing as medium rare. What do you guys think? Nothing matters if it doesn't taste right, right? Let's try it out. Down the hatch. The steak came out tender, it came out juicy. Yeah, I think it came out really nice. So here's, here's what I'm seeing. I think it, if I bought that from a restaurant, I would be happy with it. I have no complaints about how the steak came out. It was very simple to make. The fact that there's a thermometer in the entire time kind of makes me comfortable that it came out the right temperature. So far, so good with the broth. It's looking pretty good. So I did cook another one set to medium. I'm not gonna show you the entire process again, but here's the final result. This is the medium looking pretty good. Let's cut this one open, see how it looks. This one was set to medium, 132 degrees, and that's what we got. Let's try the medium. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with the steaks. I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. It went quite well. They're tender, they're juicy. I, I have no complaints about how these steaks turned out. Although I won't be able to cover every feature of the Brava in this video, I did wanna go over a few more things. Like there's a dehydrate feature. I did do some dehydrated bananas and here's how that went. All right, so if you want to dehydrate, we gotta scroll over. You can see this is the first page. We scroll over to page two and there is the dehydrate function. It defaults to 150. We're going all the way down to 135. We're gonna go for it can go up to 24 hours. We're going to go to six hours. Hit the green button. And we're off for the next six hours. All right, it's been six hours. Let's open it up and take a look. Oh, very nice. Let's uh, see how these turned out. This is one of these softer, more leathery type banana chips, but it is dehydrated. So it, it does work in that capacity. So not too bad, really. You can also use the Brava just a, as a regular countertop oven. I made a frozen deep dish pizza and here's how that went. Let's see how well this works with a frozen pizza. We're going to go with the frozen pizza directions on the back here. We're going 375 for 40 to 50 minutes. I'm going to hit bake. We're going up to 375. It's on rapid preheat. Okay. All right, preheat is complete. We'll set time. I'm gonna go 45 minutes. Continue. All right, 45 minutes, it's done. Let's check it out. Oh, it looks done. All right, so this looks pretty good. So the Brava can be used as just a regular countertop oven. For my final test, I wanted to use a Brava recipe using all three zones of three different foods on one tray, and here's what happened. Search for chicken. Let me see, we want chicken breast with broccoli and potatoes. There it is. It's gonna be laid out broccoli in zone one, chicken breast in zone two, potatoes zone three. Let me look at the recipe itself. All right, so here's what I need for your ingredients. Now there's a side salad I'm not gonna do with this, but let's see. I right, place the chicken skin side down in zone two. The thicker one on the left, skin side down. This is about six ounces. I had to cut this one down to six ounces. Six ounces of broccoli florets. 13 ounces of Yukon gold potatoes. I had the broccoli, chicken breast, and potatoes in the right spot. Now I did put the thermometer up to the chicken breast and it was just up to the one inch line. So I'll put it about right there. Do I want it juicy or well done? I'm going juicy. The temp sensor is horizontally inserted. It is connected. It's in the top shelf. We're ready to go. And we're off. 
hopefully this uh, this turns out well we shall see come back in about 20 30 minutes and let you know while this is cooking if you're wondering if you can open it up and look for yourself you can open up it will pause it and all you have to do is hit the green button to resume it says the cooking is complete all right and here we go let's uh let's plate half of this and see how it looks this is the final product let's uh, cut this chicken open and make sure it looks okay it looks uh, looks pretty cooked to me let's try the taste test now first up the chicken see how it tastes the chicken's nice and juicy i kind of like the skin on the bottom I'm not usually a big chicken skin fan but in this case it came out pretty good let's try a potato i just dropped it let's try a different potato how's this one look potatoes nicely cooked and it wasn't hard or it wasn't too mushy it was just the right consistency roasted broccoli how's that look the broccoli is perfectly fine although i tend to like roasting mine a little bit more than that i guess i could have adjusted the settings but overall all three of these ingredients were cooked quite well so you can in fact cook an entire meal maybe for two people on one tray in the brava so let's take a look at some pros and cons with the brava oven i would say the first pro is that it's surprisingly easy to use when it has so many features to it when i first got it i thought this might be a bit daunting it's not all of the steps are very clear not only when you're preparing your food but while it's cooking i like the fact that you're updated throughout the progress as your food's being cooked i never really found myself confused or uh, unsure of anything while using it and i also just never had anything that didn't turn out right i love the camera i love the notifications i love the progress as it's cooking it's just a fun appliance to use and I think the vast majority of people who buy it will probably like it and that leads me to the cons and yes there are some cons with the Brava oven the biggest con is the price the price of the Brava is absolutely outrageous to most people who's gonna pay 13 to 1700 dollars for a countertop oven even if it is high tech that just seems so out of reach for a lot of people and if you opt for the cheapest package which is still 1300 bucks you're gonna miss out on a lot of the accessories you might decide you want later like I wanted to make some banana nut bread, I didn't have the loaf pan. Now you can use a loaf pan in there, but theirs is designed to hang from one of the shelves. You'd have to adjust it because your loaf pan would probably be sitting on a tray. It's just not the same. I eventually decided I wanted to add the egg tray. It was 50 bucks plus 15 shipping, so 65 bucks for one tray. The chef's pan is 300 bucks alone if you want to buy it separately. That's also outrageous. The only other real con I found was the temperature sensor is a bit awkward to use. You have the wire that kind of sometimes doesn't always seem to go in the right place. Sometimes when you put the temperature sensor in the food and put it in the tray, it gets moved around, taken it out, it gets hot. It just feels like that is something that could be improved later on. I didn't have time to really get into it in this video, but they do have a smartphone app that basically recreates what you see on the front of the Brava, which is kind of nice because you can actually use your phone to watch your food as it's cooking. That's kind of a nice feature. In the end, I think the Brava is an impressive piece of technology. In many ways, it does feel superior to a regular countertop oven. I do think it's a technology that could find its way into a lot of homes if they could bring the price down a lot. But if you've tried the Brava, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.